Well, let me begin by saying this. Uh, this trip will ruin every other vacation you ever have in your life, okay? So, so how many people here have gone with, with me to Israel before? All right, we've, we've got a, a handful of people. Um, it is, it is um, unlike anything you'll ever experience. It's, uh, it's, it is radically life-changing. It'll bless your study of the scriptures. You, you know, this is probably one of the things I love the most. Uh, we read the word of God and, you know, it ministers so powerfully to our life. But then to have the opportunity to be in the place. I mean, you can hear, you can see, you can smell, you can touch. It really does bring the biblical story to life. And <clears throat> if you've been with me before, you know that this is true. Not only do you get blessed while you're studying in these places, and we're going to be studying the scripture in some wild places, uh, but when you come back home and you're studying the word of God, to be able to have been there, to, to be able to have a picture in your mind of those places, uh, is, it just adds something so uh, immense to your Bible study that it's really difficult to put into words. You know, um, This is my 13th or 14th time. I go twice a year. I'll be there in March. Um, and so... You know, I take, I think we've got 34 kids that are graduating uh, seniors this year from our school that I'll be taking, and uh, we do some different stuff with them. We kayak the Jordan River, and we probably won't do any kayaking on this, on, on the adult trip. I know, <laughs> but, but we're doing some stuff on this trip that the kids don't get to do, so don't envy the kids, because uh, there's some cool stuff that, that we have going on as well. Um, I'd like to, uh, in this time, just kind of lay some things out for you. Um, and uh, for Pastor Kevin, my, my cell phone's right there, so if, I, if there's questions that you guys have, Kevin, you can just text me those questions, and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, what'd you guys get as far as a handout? Let me just see. Did you, just, you got the itinerary? Okay, uh, and then you got the, the pamphlet as well. Um, if you need that, just raise your hand right now if you didn't get it. And Georgianne, Georgianne's my assistant. She's going to be uh, administrating this trip, so Gio will uh, hand that out to you. And um, you know what, can I have one of those pamphlets too, the, the flyer? I left mine on the other side. Um, so let me run through a couple of, of just basic logistical things, and um, then we'll talk about some other stuff as well. The dates right now for this trip, these are, these are settled dates. Thank you. We're going uh, November 2nd to the 15th. November is a great time of year to go. I've, just, I've been just about every time of year. Uh, November is always, I take that word back. November's mostly really nice weather. There was one trip, okay, every time we go in November, I say, it's like springtime in Vegas. And so people are saying, so I can wear shorts, and, and you know, there are some clothing uh, stipulations depending on where we're at, the sites we're visiting. I said, absolutely. So there was a whole group of people that didn't bring anything warm. And I'm telling you, we had a cold snap. It was so freezing cold. Um, so let me just manage what I'm saying here. For the most part, uh, for the most part, November's a great time of year to go. It's, it's very similar to spring in Las Vegas. Uh, we will be going from the 2nd to the 15th. We leave here on Monday, uh, and we're still, we're still working out the flights uh, be, because of a lot of different uh, variables, but we're trying to dial in the flight that's going to work best for us. We arrive on Tuesday the 3rd. And right away, I'm going to go through the itinerary with you guys, right away we'll start, start touring. So um, you're going to notice on this trip that we will be moving a lot, all right? I mean, the great thing about this trip is that you will be edified spiritually, you will be edified intellectually, and, you know, it is an, is it, it's an awesome uh, <laughs> weight loss program. No, it is, <laughs> it is, there's going to be a lot of exercise, okay? You're going to eat, uh, like kings and queens, but there's a lot of exercise on this trip as well. So uh, you, you're going to get the full package. We are on the ground, and um, you know, right now I have us coming back. We leave there the 15th, which means we get back either the night of the 15th or Monday the 16th. We're we're still working on airlines. Um, we're going to be staying up in the Galilee. And then we're going to be staying, obviously, in Jerusalem. This is uh, areas we're going to be lodging. Uh, we are going to stay on this trip at the Dead Sea. 
uh, which is a just crazy experience, the Dead Sea itself, you know, uh, because of the saline content changes uh, so much of the physical properties of the water, you literally float on the Dead Sea. I mean, it is, you, there's a buoyancy to your body. Anybody ever floated on the Dead Sea? Ra raise your hand. Isn't it just an amazing experience, right? So I took a guy over one time, very, very large guy. He said, Pastor, am I going to float on the Dead Sea? I said, bro, you're going to float on the Dead Sea. <laughs> so everybody floats. Um, we're going to be in the Dead Sea. I'll, I'll drill down on some of this for you guys. And then we will be down at the Red Sea. So we will see the Med, the Red, and the Dead on this trip. Uh, when we're down at the Dead Sea, we'll be staying uh, in a city called Eilat. And if you look at a map of modern-day Israel, the southernmost part is same in ancient times as well. But the very southern tip of um, the map, you'll see the city Eilat. Um, these are some things that are required of you guys. So if you're, you're planning on going with us, we need, and it's in the brochure, the opportunity for you to do this, we need you to complete uh, the brochure. We need all your contact information. We're going to need a valid passport. So we'll need that by May 11th. That's when um, we're going to need copies of your passport. By the way, make sure, as you look at your passport, make sure it does not expire six months from uh, the time that we are traveling. So if we're leaving in November, please make sure that your passport does not expire in June 2016. That'll be a problem. Um, if you haven't, how many people do not have a passport? Raise your hand. Uh, passport process is very simple. You can go down to the um, post office on Sunset. You can do this at many post offices, but I use the post office on Sunset. Fill the information out. They take a picture of you. Um, you, uh, I think it's 75 bucks. If you want to expedite it, it's 150. You send it in. You don't have to expedite it. It should come back in two to three weeks. So that's typically the process. Very simple process. I want to encourage you to start the process now if you haven't. If you're not a U.S. citizen, if you hold a um, passport from another country, you have to make sure you go to your consulate and make sure you get all the appropriate visas necessary to travel into Israel. Some other countries, it's not necessary. Some other countries, it is necessary. We took a guy one time, maybe four or five years ago. Um, he was from a country in Africa, and we got to Heathrow. So we landed in Heathrow. We had a layover in Heathrow. We were going into the section through the international part of Heathrow to get to our gate, and he had not done all of his paperwork. He didn't uh, get the appropriate visa. They wouldn't let him through. He had to come all the way back. So if you don't have an American passport, you have to make sure you go through this property. We, unfortunately, are unable to do that for you. So um, Georgie Ann will, though, make sure as she gets copies of your passport that if you have a foreign passport, um, she'll follow up with you to make sure you do everything that needs to be done. Um, there are deposits and payments that um, are required to secure your spot, and all of this obviously is because we have payments that have to go out almost immediately uh, once we dial in the airline. Um, and the typical airline, there's, there's one flight I normally use for the adult trip. Uh, it's already booked, so um, there's tons of flights. It's not an issue, but um, once we identify the flight that we want uh, we have to pay up front. So the trip payment dates, are these on your um, brochure? Yeah. Okay, great. So January 19th, the total, cost, the total cost of the trip is going to be approximately between $46 and $4,700, all right? $46 and $4,700. Um, it's a little bit more on this trip because we are all taking an excursion into Jordan. And so, you know, that means that there's an extended bus ride from Jerusalem to Elat, uh, we have to pay for all of that, and then, then we will, I'm going to talk about the itinerary when we're down there, then we're also going to be going into Jordan, which means that we've got um, passport issues, visa issues, we switched bus, we get a, a Jordanian tour guide, um, there's entrance fees into the, um, the park there, uh, there at Petra, so there are all sorts of other expenses, um, plus we'll be staying in a lot, which, you know, is an expensive uh, city to stay in. Um, as you honestly, as I, I survey prices, this is how we work. Um, a lot of people build, build a pad into their expenses. We do not do that. We do not build a pad 
and to the expenses. So we have intentionally pulled back the cost of these trips as much as we possibly can so that as many people as possible are able to go. Um, and, you know, um, there's stuff that we do on our side that we don't pass over onto you. Like, well, I'm going to take a worship leader. The cost of that is not passed over onto you guys. Um, it's a cost that the church um, absorbs. So, you know, I'm saying all that just to say that as I survey prices, it's actually really good for all that we're going to do. We're staying on the ground a long time. But you can go through the uh, list here, January 19th. Uh, there's a $900 payment due, the, in, and then in February, and then in June, and then in July, all of those different um, expenses. I'm going to dial in. We, we've, I think that we pretty much have dialed in our ground cost. Hopefully in the next week and a half, we'll have settled our, our air cost uh, and then, then, you know, we'll be able to give you guys um, more of a definitive price. Now, let me just say this, you know, as I've said everything else, um, sometimes the price uh, per barrel for, for oil is like rock bottom right now. I mean, I think it's under 50 bucks a barrel. So sometimes what airlines do, and we have this issue um, a couple of years ago, as the cost of gas was going up, sometimes they pass that, that cost on to us. So once we dial in our airline, I'm going to nail that down, too, with the person who will be establishing um, our tickets just to see what the potential. Normally, there's the max on that. Sometimes it's like 200 bucks. Um, I don't foresee that happening, but I'm just letting you know that the potential of that happening is there. But we'll make sure that you guys have all that information. Everybody is put um, in two for a room. So obviously, if you're traveling with your spouse, uh, you're, you're all set there. Um, otherwise, we will, if you're single, we will put you in a room with someone else unless you want a single room. If you definitely want a single room, there's an additional cost, obviously, um, and that's $1,100. So, <clears throat> you know, if that's you, you're going to want to make sure you talk with Georgianne about that. Um, if you use a credit card, uh, here, if you use a credit card to pay for the trip, just remember that there's a 2.5% transaction fee for every um, transaction you make via credit card. So when you're talking about this amount of money, it ends up being significant. Just keep that in mind that um, there is a processing fee free, free for that. It's not free. It is a fee. I wish it was free. Um, also, so you say, what does it include? It includes everything. So when I say price, we're talking about, um, we are talking about your airline. We're talking about the ground cost, which means ground transportation. Uh, it pays for our tour guide, which I'm going to talk about her in a minute. It pays for our bus driver. I'll talk about him in a minute. We select our tour guide and our bus driver. Um, it pays for all of your breakfasts and your dinners. So at these hotels, we, uh, we eat and we eat, and then we eat some more, okay? It's almost ridiculous, but the food is, the food is excellent, um, and um, uh, it covers your food. It doesn't cover lunches, so, uh, you know, you're on your, lo your own for lunches. Um, there are a couple lunches that we're going to cover for you guys. Or just, it's just a great experience, and so we want to bless you guys with that. It covers all of the cost to get into the places that we're, we're visiting. It covers all of your tips. You never have to, to tip a bell person or the dining staff or anything like that. So the only thing that's not included in this cost, like I said, are your lunches. And then also, I'm not, buying, I'm not, I'm not spending for your shopping. So if you want to buy stuff, you're on your own. Uh, people say, how much should I bring? You know, it just depends on how much you like to shop, you know, how much you want to stuff in your luggage, how much you want to ship back home. Um, but normally we encourage people to bring a couple hundred bucks, so we can talk about that more. Uh, there are cancellation fees for this, and they're not just like indiscriminate cancellation fees. Um, like I said, there's stuff, there's expenses we have that we can't get back. And so just th think this through. Um, there is a cancellation prior to ticket purchasing before July 15, 250. Let me, let me work through some of these cancellation fees, okay? Um, once we buy the tickets, you can't get your money back. Um, sometimes what they'll do is they will, you have that ticket that we can change, exchange the name on, or if we can't, you get a ticket. We'll work through the cancellation stuff with you guys. Um, sometimes that is airline to airline. 
Um, there is an opportunity for you guys to uh, purchase trip insurance, which, um, you know, I think trip insurance is like 75 to to $100, something like that. What was the cost on trip insurance? 200 Age discrimination, so it's cheaper when you're older? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Um, look, at, there's, there's, there is a company that we use called Travel Guard, and um, you can go to travelguard.com, get all the information through them. And, um, you know, uh, I, I think it's worthwhile. Have we ever had somebody that e eventually used it? Um, the answer to that question is no. So... Um, let, me, let me give you a list of the um, trip payments one more time. And Gio, I need you to send to Kevin. Can you send him these lists, the, the list of these um, payment dates so he has it for the people? January 19th, $900. Feb What's that? Is it the same as this? Okay. All right. The 22nd is $900. The second payment on February 26th is $1,650. The third payment on May 20th is $1,500. And the final payment on July 15th is $550. Okay, that's a total of $4,600. So um, that's, that's what we're shooting for. And um, in the next week and a half, I should have that all settled up for you guys. There's a $50 discount that we're offering until February 23rd. If you pay $1,800 up front, you know, we're trying to make uh, this as inexpensive for you as possible. So um, that, those are the, um, those are the payment dates. And uh, Kevin will get you those um, via email. Any questions so far? Yeah. Uh, how many hours is the flight? The flight? Okay, so the question is, how long is the flight? If we fly through New York, Newark, it's five hours to Newark, and then it's 11 hours from Newark to Tel Aviv. Ten, between 10 and 11 hours, depending on the tailwind. So five hours from Las Vegas to Newark, and then this is, if this is the route that we take, then 10, 10 hours or so from Newark to Tel Aviv. Um, if we fly through Newark, we have a very short layover, um, that one's probably going to be an hour and 45 minutes, so that's, that's, a, that's about it. You went to Midland last year, it cost you a half a euro to move to the guest room. Right. Did they have that there? N uh, in, in Newark? No, no, in Italy. I mean, in, in Israel. In oh. Israel. You have to pay to go to the bathroom. Um, you have to pay to go to the bathroom. Something just sounds wrong about that, you know? This is weird. <laughs> Um, there are a couple of places where you have to pay a couple of shekels uh, to use the restroom. Normally, the restroom is free. So um, there is a real exception to the rule. I'm trying to think. I know that on, when we're at uh, Mount Beatitudes, uh, the Catholic Church charges to use the restroom. Normally, it's the Catholic Church that's charging to use the restroom. No offense here, but um, maybe we should charge to use the restroom here at Calvary Chapel Spring Valley. Uh, so um, the answer to that is typically no. Israel, the uh, currency in Israel is not the euro, it's the shekel. Um, and so when, when we get there, don't exchange any money stateside. Um, you know, when we get there, I will take you to uh, the best places to exchange money. The euro, or excuse me, the shekel right now is 3.94. So, so it's 3.94 shekels to the dollar, um, which is up from when we were there in June. So when we get there, uh, we'll be in the Galilee. Our, the guy we exchange uh, money with, his name is Dudu. He's a really sweet guy. <laughs> great guy. No, he's a, he's a great guy, and he gives us a good exchange rate. So. And that itself is an experience, because he's a really unique character. Thus, I'm sure you've um, understood by his name. Uh, what else? What other questions? Yes. Okay. That's a great question. So um, the question is, is there any special way that you need to dress? Uh, so there, 
You can dress casually um, at all times unless we're visiting a site that is either Catholic or Muslim, all right? So if we're visiting a Catholic site, then they require that um, men wear pants and that women um, do not have their knees exposed. So women would have to wear either pants or um, a long skirt or some type of dress type of thing. And then in addition to that, the shoulders can't be exposed or um, for the ladies, this part of your body can't be exposed either. So for on the Temple Mount, they're very particular about this on the Temple Mount. You know, the, the Temple Mount um, from, a, from a, the perspective of government is governed by the um, Jewish Jerusalem police, but from a religious pr perspective is um, governed by the waqf, the Islamic police. And so when you go up, they'll be making sure that all ladies are, are covered appropriately, which means no tank tops, no bare shoulders, no knees showing, um, and they get pretty particular about that. When we're at Catholic sites, say for instance, if we're at um, Capernaum and we're visiting the synagogue there, um, or the ancient house of Peter, supposedly, um, Catholic site, they require the same thing. So jeans are fine, slacks are fine, um, but in those places, what we'll do the night before, every evening, I'll say, hey guys, this is the deal. Tomorrow, we are going to be visiting the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in old, the old city. So that means that it's conservative wear tomorrow, and that's, that's just the way it is. Or I'll say something like this, um, hey guys, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be um, at, you know, let me think about this. We're going to be visiting... We are going to be visiting Tel Dan, or we're going to be up at Nimrod's castle. Casual wear, you can wear shorts, uh, you can wear a t-shirt. So I'll let you know ahead of time, but you do have to be prepared for both. Long answer, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you know, they are pretty concerned. That particular day that we visit the wall is the day that we also visit the Temple Mount. So, you know, that pretty much dictates it for us right there. We will go um, up onto the Temple Mount, and then we'll exit the Temple Mount and walk right down to the Western Wall, which is an amazing experience. It's just awesome. Um, if there, there's a question here from uh, Kevin about if people want to make their own arrangements um, because they may have miles and they want to go to Turkey on, on the way back. Um, this, is, this is the thing. Typically, typically we don't do that. Um, however, we will make exceptions depending on the situation. This is what can't happen. Uh, they are heavily security conscious there, heavily security conscious. So when we get into country, they'll know exactly what we're doing the whole time. And then when we go t through security on the way back, They'll question our guide, and then they'll question me. They will grill me on almost everything that, that we've done. And then they will pull some of you. You don't have to be afraid of this, but they'll pull some of you, and they'll verify what I said um, because they are so security conscious. Um, so that means that we've got to get there together as a group, right? We will leave the airport as a group. We will travel together as a group, and then we will leave as a group. Um, so the exception to the rule for flight miles is this, uh, that the flight just has to arrive at the airport the same time or around the same time that our flight does. In other words, we're not going to wait around. We're not going to pick somebody up somewhere else. Um, I don't want to be in a place where people are joining our group indiscriminately um, you know, during the trip. It just puts us in a security position and it's you know, a risk that I really don't want to deal with. So um, if you're going to use flight miles, it is something that we can talk through, but you have to arrive with us on the same day and you have to leave with us on the same day. Sorry to be so picky, but... Um, all right, any other questions so far? Sir? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me just say this. I have taken uh, ladies and guys in their mid-80s and late-80s, and um, 
we work it out with everybody. We work it out with everybody. So um, there's a lot of walking. There's less walking in the Galilee because we're taking a bus. By the way, the bus is like a luxury bus. It's got uh, air conditioning, nice seats. It's got Wi-Fi for all you Wi-Fi junkies. Um, so we're going to be taking the bus from site to site. And then there's some walking depending on where we're at. Um, a lot of the walking is going to happen in the old city of Jerusalem. So we'll be walking, you know, I mean, it's gonna, there's a lot of walking there. And then it's, it's in the old city. It's tight there. Um, and then also we're obviously going to be going to Petra, which means, you know, that hike into Petra is a significant walk as well. It's not like... Uh, the Spartan race or anything like that. Everybody here, as I surveyed this group, I have no concerns. And I'm telling you, if I did, I would, have already, I would have already checked that box. I have no concerns with anybody here. I think all of you can do it. Okay. Okay. We'll be praying for you. You can do it. You can do it, sister. A lot of bacon? A lot of bacon? Bro, it's kosher. <laughs> there's one place that makes bacon and um and this is the place we normally stay at because i've got to have bacon um this the, the gatherings <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious uh this place is a hotel it's called the scots hotel and we started using the scots about two and a half years ago uh it is it's by far the nicest hotel it's owned by the, the Presbyterian Church it used to be a hospital. Our bus driver was born there like 55 years ago. Um, but the food is out of control. Good. It's booked right now. So right now I'm having a hard time arranging the Scots, which means most likely no bacon for this trip. You could BYOB. Bring your own bacon. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, you want to make sure, we'll give, you, we'll give you a whole layout for this. You want um, it all labeled, all right? You want to have enough medication with you on your person for the trip over, um, but just make sure that your, your medication is labeled. Um, you know, it's never been an issue ever, but, you know, sometimes they'll go through stuff, and the only requirement really is that you have it adequately labeled. Yeah. God forbid anything happened, but my last time I was out in Kansas City, they got caught over in Israel on 9 11. Do you do you have like an uh, do you have like an emergency plan for something like that? What if it happened again? Yeah. So what happens if something crazy happens over there? We enjoy it. We are along for the ride. Uh, look at it, no one like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Look, this is the deal, and I'll talk about this in a minute. We, I've got very good friends in Israel, all right, and um, I have no concerns whatsoever. We were well, very well taken care of. Saar El, the tour company we use, uh, is owned by a believer. He's a Jewish believer. There's a whole community of people. Our tour guide is part of my family, and so um, we've been over there with, when things have gotten crazy. In May, on May 14th, the Palestinians have... Uh, a reverse celebration called Nakba, which means Day of Destruction. And so when we were over there with the kids, uh, you know, I mean, it was crazy. That was when Syrians were coming over. They crossed over the UN buffer zone, came through the fence there on, that, um, on the Golan Heights. That was when there was riding up on um, the Mount of Olives. And we just avoided those areas, you know. So... Um, I don't foresee anything like that happening. If something happens, like what happened in the conflict with Gaza this last, um, this last year, first of all, if something significant like that was happening where rockets were going over Jerusalem, we wouldn't even go on the trip. Um, I don't foresee that happening. If something like that was going to happen, all the warning signs would be there. But still, I want, I want to remind you guys of something. Please do not allow your perspective of Israel to be shaped by our media, okay? I am in contact all the time with Israelis and with workers in the field there. And, you know, unless you're in Be'er Shiva, which, you know, I mean, that's, that can be a dangerous place to be right across from the Gaza Strip. Uh, the rest of Israel goes on functioning 
like it normally does. And so you have this picture of all this conflict, and the reality is the majority of the country is not even um, like that. So the media presents it in a way that's just not accurate. But um, I am telling you, we will take care of you while you're there, and we'll make sure that, um, I mean, I take people's kids, right? I've got 34 high school graduates going with me, so we're very security conscious. Um, Kevin asked a question about flying to Las Vegas to join us and then to Newark. Possible for us to fly directly from Denver to meet you all in Newark. I know there was a collection and tagging of luggage in Las Vegas. Um, people from, our, from your fellowship hope to go. I might have 12. So we have to work that out. You know, it's really, it, it is challenging. I, I think that flying, Kevin, I think that flying from um, Denver to here and then us going as a group would be good. I think that we could arrange it also depending on how many you have absolutely going so that we all meet in Newark if that's possible. Those are probably the two best solutions for sure. I think us meeting in Tel Aviv is not a good idea. Um, we can tag our baggage independently as you guys leave Denver, but um, let me work out the details on that with our airline. And, um, you know, obviously we're trying to think of the lowest possible cost. I, I think that, you know, it's going to be an added cost for you guys to fly to Las Vegas and then to Newark and then to Tel Aviv. So we need to work on, if, if you have a definitive number, we need to work on getting the 12 of you, that's what it looks like from your, from your text, the 12 of you from Denver to Newark, which is probably the best option, I think. And then we'll all go to, together as a group. Hopefully that helps. Um, and then, I'm not sure, we've got a lot of interest here, so we're just going to have to see what that is over the next couple of weeks. Um, other questions? Sir? No free time for you guys. <laughs> uh, nothing is free on this trip. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's, let's answer that question by going through the itinerary together. Uh, so if you guys turn to your itinerary, uh, we fly in, like I said, on Tuesday, November 3rd. Our hope is to get there in the morning. Um, we'll see what happens, all right? Um, we hit the ground running. We, God willing, will be able to go to Caesarea by the sea. We'll be, that means we'll be on the Mediterranean. That is where the ancient uh, theater is, also where Herod built not only his seaside palace, but also where he built uh, a port. It, it's, it's just an amazing site. We'll go from there to Mount Carmel. Uh, we'll visit the traditional site where Elijah um, won his victory over the prophets of Baal and Ashtoreth. We'll visit the Druze village there, some really cool shopping, and then we'll check in our hotel. I know it says Scott's, but I'm not necessarily sure that's the way it's going to roll. We'll check in our hotel around 5 o'clock. So, so we will hit the ground running on that day. Um, great day. On Wednesday, this is all subject to change, all right? So please be flex flexible. Wednesday, we'll go up to the Golan Heights. Um, we'll see the buffer zone. We will... Um, we will uh, then go to Nimrod's castle, ancient castle built in the Crusader era, amazing view over the Hula Valley. We'll go to Canetra um, and Caesarea Philippi, which is where Peter made the great proclamation, um, you're the Christ, you're the son of the living God. Uh, we will also probably do some hiking there. Um, there are a couple of riverheads, uh, natural springs that Feed the Sea of Galilee, we're going to visit two of those. Uh, one is called the Banyas Waterfalls, and then we are definitely going up to Tel Dan, which is um, another one of those natural springs that feeds the Sea of Galilee, ultimately the Jordan River, um, and we'll visit a very significant ancient site there in Tel Dan. We'll also see um, the ancient city in Tel Dan that most likely Abraham was in when he rescued Lot. I mean, so we're talking 5,600 years old. Let me think about that. No, not 56, 2,000, 3,600 years old, something like that. We'll go back to the hotel. Thursday, we have a boat ride um, on the Sea of Galilee. Lots of fun. We go see an ancient boat, uh, which is, you know, a fishing boat circa Jesus's era. 
Uh, we go to Mount Beatitudes, we go to Capernaum, we will visit, probably visit Chorazim. We'll then go to En Geb, which is on the east side of the Sea of Galilee. We'll have a, a good lunch there, and then we'll do a water baptism there. So if you want to be water baptized, we're going to take sign-ups for that, um, and I can explain that more. That's, that's Galilee. Free time in Galilee, you'll have free time in Galilee. We're going to be staying in the city of Tiberias, great city, um, great um, city center. Take that with a grain of salt. We live in Las Vegas, so, you know, it, a great little city center, lots of shopping there, great coffee places, great place to hang out. So that'll be within walking distance from our hotel. You'll have free time to do that um, there in the Galilee. On the 6th, we leave uh, for Jerusalem. We will go to, this is not in the right order, so, um, yeah, it is in the right order. We'll go to Megiddo. Um, so we'll go to the Valley of Jezreel. We'll visit the ancient Tel uh, Megiddo. Uh, we'll have a Bible study. We'll do a review of the book of Revelation there because that's where the Battle of Armageddon is going to take place. We will hopefully be able to go to Gideon's Spring, uh, you know, where Gideon's army was whittled down and he whooped up on the Midianites. We'll go to Beth Shin. Uh, one of the most amazing archaeological sites you will ever see in your life is the ancient city of Beth Shin. And I can, it's one of my favorite places to visit, but it has um, been restored, some, somewhat restored by archaeologists, and it is really a treat. We get into Jerusalem late that night. We're staying, staying at Dan Panorama. Um, Dan Panorama is about a 15-minute walk from Jaffa Gate. Jaffa Gate's the old city. It's about a 25-minute walk to Ben Yehuda Street. Ben Yehuda is like the hangout. It's their version of the Strip, um, you know, but not on steroids, and a lot more wholesome, a lot more wholesome. So I'm, I'm there almost every night having juice, having coffee, having ice cream, hanging out, you know, street performers, musicians. It is a great place to hang out. Um, and then sometimes I'll go to where the locals hang out and get some shakshuka. So if you guys want to go have shakshuka with me, you can. On the 7th, Saturday, we're going to have um, our group photo. We'll go to the Mount of Olives. We will do the um, Palm Sunday triumphal entry. We're going to kind of follow that pattern. We'll go to Dominus Flevit, the place where the Lord wept over the city of Jerusalem. We'll go down to the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, where all of these ancient olive trees are growing. We'll get picked up by the bus. We'll have lunch together. And then we're going to do um, the Catholic Via Dolorosa, all right? I, I want to show both of them to you guys. I'm going to show you the one that I think is historically accurate, um, uh, Gordon's Calvary. But then also I want to show you, you know, the traditional Catholic way as well. We're going to begin that at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, um, ancient Catholic uh, church. Good for you to see. It's, it's pretty wild, the traditionalism. Then we'll walk... Um, down through the ancient uh, old city. We'll come up to St. Anne's. We'll have a teaching at the pools of Bethesda, and then we'll leave uh, through the Lion's Gate. Um, these nights end probably around 5 o'clock. So when we're in Jerusalem, you can, you're 15 minutes from the old city. So you can literally, and I, I, I go into the old city with my son, you know. I mean, we go in, we hang out. I go into the craziest place possible, and I say, okay, you know, show me how to get out of here. We've been three times together. I took my daughter last year. I may take Levi this year. I'm not sure if, if I'm going to do that, but um, totally safe in the old city. So I don't have a problem with you guys going into the old city yourself, shopping, you know, if there's some things that you want to do because we're not going to do the rabbi's tunnel. Um, and if you want to do that, if you want to set that up, it's a possibility. The problem with that is typically those sites close by the time we're back. Um, so that's, that may be a hard one to arrange. Uh, on Sunday, we're going to go to the Temple Mount, God willing. Sometimes that, that gets a little bit sketchy. We'll go, go down to the Western Wall. We'll hang out in the Jewish Quarter. Uh, we'll, we will walk the Cardo, which is um, the street in every Roman city that goes north, south. It's the main marketplace street. We'll visit the Arab Market. Uh, tons of shopping there. We'll exit out Jaffa Gate. And then on Monday, we do the City of David. Um, you know, if you, if you look at a topographical map of 
Jerusalem, what you'll notice is there's this land peninsula that comes down to a point, and then it has kind of sheer cliffs on each side. That southern point of that land peninsula is the ancient city of David. So we're going to go to a place where they're going to show a movie, you know, very, you know, very solid historical um, representation of what that ancient city was like. We will hike Hezekiah's Tunnel. Have you guys heard of Hezekiah's Tunnel? So about a third of a mile long, Hezekiah connected the Gihon Springs to the Pool of Siloam. He brought the water source from the outside of the city into the inside of the city, but he carved a tunnel in solid bedrock. Uh, took a long time to do. We will walk that tunnel. I mean, it's, you know, a small tunnel um, that has running water going through it. So we will hike that together. We're, we'll shut our flashlights off, total pitch darkness. It is like one of the most amazing things you'll experience. Um, that's very fun. So we'll do that together. If you're tall, wear a hat. If you're bald, put something soft on top of your head. Uh, we'll, we'll be at the Pool of Siloam teaching there. We'll go to Davidson Center. Uh, we'll visit the Afel Stairs. We'll see rocks that were literally, or, or stones, that were pushed off the Temple Mount in 70 AD and have been sitting in the same place, uh, just as Jesus predicted for um, almost 2,000 years. We will have lunch, and then we'll probably go to the Herodian. We'll have a, um, a visual of Bethlehem. So people say, Pastor, why don't we go to Bethlehem? Bethlehem is a very complicated process, um, and... I don't mean this to sound bad, but it's really not worth it. What we have to do is we've got to change buses. We've got to change tour guides. We have to get a Palestinian bus, Palestinian tour guides. Um, when you get there, it has been so commercialized. And the church uh, of the nativity, listen, it is so religious, it's hard for me to walk in it. You know, pastors are collecting money for prayers. Um, it's just there's a heaviness there that, um, you know, I've determined on our trips for the time it takes to do it, it's just not worth it. So we'll go to the Herodian, and then we'll see Bethlehem uh, from the Herodian. We'll have a teaching there. It's a great alternative. On the 10th, we go to Beth Shemesh, uh, and we go to Elah Valley, the place that David slew Goliath. We'll visit Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Museum. Um, and then from there, we'll go to the Israel Museum. We'll visit the Shrine of the Book, where there are copies of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, an amazing model, huge model of uh, the ancient city of Jerusalem, circa 70 AD, um, and that'll help you get your bearings on the ancient city. On Wednesday, we're going to be leaving, um, and we'll do uh, Gordon's Calvary, all right? So we're going to take what I believe is probably the more accurate uh, way that Jesus took from the praetorium to um, the place where he was crucified and buried and resurrected. Now, there, there's some interesting historical archaeological stuff that just has been discovered that we'll be able to share on this trip as well. But um, we will start there. We will walk through um, out the Damascus gate. Uh, it's interesting, you know, just about 20 years ago, they discovered under the current gate, the ancient Damascus gate um, that Jesus, I believe, would have walked through when he was carrying the patibulum, that uh, vertical cross beam of the cross. We will, go to, um, we will go to the garden tomb. We'll have communion there. Uh, we'll enter into the empty tomb uh, because he's not dead, he's risen. And uh, we'll spend some time in worship and reflection as well. We'll get on the bus. We'll head down to the Dead Sea. On the way, we'll go to En Gedi, David's uh, wilderness hideout. We will go to Masada. I'm going to hike up Masada. How many of you guys are hiking Masada with me? Okay. It is rugged, like with a capital R, all right? Very, very tough. It is like stair-stepper from hell, literally. It is really bad. So you, you want to be in shape to do Masada. We're doing it a little bit differently here. So if you're going to hike Masada, you probably are going to have to be able to do it in like 30 to 40 minutes, um, which is not going to be easy because everybody else will be taking the tram up and we can't have a big time gap between the time where hikers get up and um, tram folk get up. So we'll do Masada. We will go to the Dead Sea afterwards, hopefully arrive at Isratel at 5 o'clock. Um, that hotel is amazing. It is, uh, you know, the Dead Sea is, it's all luxury hotels and everything like that. You'll still be able to go down and, and jump in the water most likely at that time. We don't check out on Thursday morning till 11 o'clock, so you'll have the whole morning 
Um, they, you can get a massage there. They've got all kinds of great stuff for those of you who are interested in that. Um, and then we'll check out at 11 o'clock. We'll go down to a lot. We'll stop at Timna Park where they have a, um, a model of uh, the tabernacle. So it's a scale model of the tabernacle. You guys remember the tabernacle in the Old Testament that Moses had built? Um, it's got a, um, a representation of everything. The um, altar the uh, laver, and then you can walk into what you know, would have been the holy place and the most holy place. Um, it's really a great thing to see. We get down to a lot, probably check in the hotel about five o'clock. Um, a lot is a very fun city to hang out in. You'll have opportunity and time to uh, shop there as well. Um, on Friday, uh, it says cruise on the Red Sea, which is a possibility. Right now, I'm seeing if we can get to Mount Sinai. Um, there have been security concerns uh, in Mount Sinai um, ever since Mubarak was overthrown. It's become a hotbed for terrorism. So a couple of years ago, we weren't able to go. Too dangerous. Pastor got abducted. Um, I figured probably none of us want that on our itinerary. So, um, so you're, not, you're like, oh, I'm all right. Pastor gets abducted. I just don't want to get abducted. Um, so I'm, I'm talking right now with um, our tour company and... The, the way I feel about this is, if we can do Sinai, we'll do Sinai, all right? That's priority. Um, if we don't do Sinai, we will cruise the Red Sea, and it is fun. I mean, it is so much fun. We have this uh, huge boat. Uh, you can do parasailing. A, a speedboat will come up on side of the boat. We'll go, you, if you want to parasail, you can get down and do it. It's like, I don't know, 25 or 30 bucks to parasail. To parasail on the Red Sea is just out of control. It's a lot of fun. It's one or the other. Yeah, it's either or. Um, I will have that dialed in, hopefully, within the next two weeks as well. On Saturday, we go to Petra. So like I said, um, they handle all the visa stuff. We take a, a significantly you know, long drive, a couple of hours, I think, if I can remember correctly, to Petra. You will be speechless. You will be speechless. Like, I literally almost couldn't talk. It is so overwhelming. You know, the Navians carved out of... The Rock, a city that 30,000 people were living in. I'm this ancient city carved out of rock. How many of you guys have seen Indiana Jones, the third one? Like you, you're like, I don't want to admit I'm that old. Okay, no, just admit it because I can tell already. I saw it. And you know the end there where he goes into that, that facade that's carved out of red sandstone? That's what we're going to see. That, is, um, that building is the treasury, so the ancient treasury. But um, it's amazing. But it's more than that. I mean, you, you can hike for hours. Uh, we'll come back to the hotel on Sunday the 15th. We check out at 9 o'clock. We go up to the Ramon Crater. Very interesting thing to see. We'll go to Tel Be'ershiva. I'll probably teach on Islam there. Um, and uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael. And then that night, we're working on a late night flight out of uh, Jerusalem or Tel Aviv back to... Las Vegas. Sorry, I know that was long. I can't help myself. It's just so much fun. Uh, any questions? <clears throat> Ma'am. Uh, yeah. Good question. So the process for luggage is the same at every hotel. This is what we do. Um, we'll put our luggage on at the airport. Um, we'll, we'll pull up to our hotel in the Galilee. We'll all go in. I'll have your room key, all right? In your envelope, you'll also have a sticker with your room number on it. You'll take that sticker, tag it, um, tag your luggage with it. The bellboys will bring that up to your room, all right? The night before we leave, I'll say to you something like this. Hey, you're getting a wake-up call at 6 o'clock. Your luggage needs to be out front of your door at 6.45, at 7.30, we're all going to make sure our luggage is in the lobby. You're going to check your luggage, and then the bellboys are going to put your luggage onto the bus. Uh, and so there it stays until we go to the next hotel. It is the exact same process that we do all over again. At any point, Pastor, will we be using public transportation, or will it always be the bus? Always our bus. Always our bus. Yep. No public transportation. Not unless you want to. What else? Yeah, 
That's a really good question. Um, so the question is, should we um, take enough clothes or can we do laundry while we're there? And there's two answers to that. Um, you can do laundry in your bathtub, which I've done before, and at the Dead Sea, it is so arid there, literally, it is so arid, your laundry dries out really fast. You can, you can do your own laundry. Um, there's three, three solutions here to this. You can take enough, you know, you can take enough. You're going to get to a point on like day three where you're going to stop caring about how good you look, okay? <laughs> really. You're going to be like, I ain't doing my hair today. I mean, it takes me like day three till I get to that point. I'm like, I ain't doing my hair today. So, you know, we're going to become family. I'm telling you guys, on this trip, you're going to make friendships that will last you a lifetime. And all that stuff that we normally get all concerned about isn't going to, you know, be that much of an issue. So you'll find yourself wearing your shorts twice, you know, wearing your pants twice or whatever. So you can pack like that. They also do laundry um, at the hotels. It is not cheap, all right? It's not cheap. Um, but you can get your laundry done that way as well. When we eat at night, uh, dinner's kind of a formal affair there, and so uh, when we eat at night, you don't, you know, it's not absolutely necessary, but we typically are dressing up. You know, we've got, I wear um, slacks and a collared shirt um, or a sweater or something like that just because, you know, it's kind of old school. It's kind of nice. Um, so be prepared for that. Be prepared for casual wear. Be prepared for conservative wear when we hit some of these um, religious places. And then make sure you bring uh, hiking shoes, tennis shoes. You, you cannot wear flip-flops this whole trip, okay? I mean, I'd love to wear flip-flops this whole trip. You cannot. And we're going to be hiking in places where you do not want to wear flip-flops. You you'll damage your feet. So make sure you've got a really good pair of um, tennis shoes or, or hiking shoes. Um, and then there's some other stuff we can talk about in our next meeting. When we go through Hezekiah's Tunnel, you'll want some water shoes. Um, you'll probably want to wear, if you're getting baptized, you're going to want to have, you know, a modest bathing suit. Um, I'm going to say something to you guys, you know, and I just want you to think this through. We, we typically are, we used to do our baptisms. You got the Sea of Galilee. We do it up in the Galilee. You the Sea of Galilee. Then you have a little tiny outlet that is the beginning of the Jordan River. There's a place um, that was built, Pastor Chuck subsidized a good portion of this, there's a place that was built where you can do baptisms. Um, and so people, most Calvaries do their baptisms there. Um, I stopped doing baptisms there, all right? And people say, well, I want to be baptized in the Jordan. Uh, we do our baptisms in the Sea of Galilee and it is like literally no different at all. Um, I stopped doing it because the water is so dirty uh, because there are fish this big that will swallow your leg. Um, and because they've commercialized it. So you walk in, they're selling the water. Um, and look at, it's not, it's not Jordan River water. They just got it out of the tap and they're selling it to you. It is so commercialized, it takes something away from the experience. So I found a place in the Sea of Galilee. We're able to worship. Um, you know, another issue there is Europeans are just a little bit different than we are. And uh, w the first year I went, if you're getting baptized, you wear this white gown. Uh, well, the problem is the white gown, when it gets wet, is totally see-through. So, you know, we've got 40 or 50 people. We're doing baptisms. All of a sudden, five or six old Europeans get up out of the water. And, <laughs> like, don't imagine. I'm not saying imagine this, but it was bad. Everyone was like, it killed worship. It killed the baptism. <laughs> It was just like that moment was gone forever. Uh, maybe not forever because some people have been damaged by that memory. But um, so, and it gets crazy. Like if you hit it at a very busy time, people are literally fighting over the spots. Uh, it's just too much. So I don't do it there anymore. Uh, what else? Um, if you're going to pay it all at once, um, if you're going to pay it all at once, the thing is, we're going to have expenses immediately. So, um, you know, uh, let me see here. I I'm going to have to get back to you on that. I, got, I, got to th I have to think about when our first uh, payment is going to be for the airline. They're, they haven't told us because we haven't selected an airline yet. 
um, and then they have another payment that is huge. It's a huge payment, so it's got to come before that happens. That's probably, if you're going to pay it in full, that's probably a couple of months away, I'm guessing. So stay connected to Georgie Ann um, because she'll be able to have that info for you. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. <laughs> Some people would like to. Um, so uh, there are size limitations. Of course, some of this is going to be dependent upon the airline that we choose, but typically it rolls like this. You have a big piece of luggage. I have a very large piece of luggage that is like maximum size. And typically they're all the same size. So think about that big, big piece. I can't remember the exact dimensions. Um, and it's normally 50 pound maximum. If you go over 50 pounds, uh, they will charge you. And it, it's excessive. The expense is excessive. Um, and then they'll charge you for another bag. So um, you're going to want to think that through. And then you're also going to want to pack in a way where if you want to buy stuff, you're going to want to be able to put it in your luggage unless you want to pay for an extra piece of luggage or if you want to ship your stuff home, which is what some people do as well. What else? Definitely, absolutely, yep. So the number of hotel changes, uh, Kevin, are will be in the Galilee, will be in Jerusalem, will be in Israel, and then will be in a lot. So there's four hotels that we'll be staying in. Sir, he had his hand up first. Uh, Georgie Ann, right there. Raise your hand, Gio. That's my administrator, administrative assistant. So she will handle all those payments for you. Um, and then also, you know, if she's not here, you can just talk to the front desk and, and they'll help, help you out. Uh, and then we'll work it out with the people in Winston and Loveland as well. Yes? Um, aside from uh, being able to float in the Red Sea, you can't swim because your eyes are burned. But um, I was just wondering, when we go to Caesarea, will we have an opportunity to swim in the Mediterranean? It's really warm. Anything yeah. You can. Um, there is no opportunity to swim in the Mediterranean. Um, I wish that there was, but we just, we don't have the time for that. The only time we're really going to be there is when we get in, um, and that's going to be a pretty, you know, fast pace um, through Caesarea by the Sea. I'm just thinking here. There's a place where, like, I'll take you down. We'll go to Herod's ancient palace. We'll visit uh, a replica of um, the stone that they found in the foundation that talked about Pilate. And then we'll go down to a place where there's a ton of seashells. You'll be able to touch the water there, but there won't be any swimming, unfortunately. What else? All right. You guys excited? Yeah. This is going to be so much fun. You have no idea. You're going to be blessed. Um, Kevin, I don't have any more questions here, so I'm just assuming that, that we're good. God bless you guys. We love you, and uh, we're excited to be able to do this trip together. I'm going to pray for us, and uh, I'm going to ask you guys to pray for me. You know, if you think about it, this week um, I'm going to be in uh, an IBS thing in Mazatlan. I got a pastor's conference in La Paz, and then we get back next Saturday night. I'll be teaching all day Sunday, and then we leave Monday for Asia. Um, I'll be in the Philippines, so pastor's conferences there and stuff like that. If you guys could pray for that, I'd be thankful, all right? Let's pray together. Father, we love you. God, we're very excited, and um, I'm excited. God, my heart just leaps for these opportunities, and, and we're so privileged. Lord, we pray that you'd provide. We pray you'd unite our hearts. We, we pray, God, you'd bless our brothers and sisters in Colorado. Uh, Father, I pray that you would be preparing them as well. We're privileged, God, to be able to take this trip together, and, and we pray, God, we know you have great things in store for us. We pray, God, that you would deepen our relationship with you. And God, there would be a closeness in intimacy. God, a deepness is the longing of our heart. I think about what the psalmist penned. Uh, Lord, our hearts thirst for the living God as a deer pants for the brooks of water. So, Father, may you fulfill this thirst in our lives. And, and God, would you please use this to do that in Jesus' name. Amen.